Hi, it's Ian here from HT2 Labs, one of the solutions architects here. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to export data from your LRS into a flat file format. When you log into Learning Locker, you'll be presented with the dashboard page where we want to find the menu item on the left called Source. Now here we're presented with a, a query editor that you may be already familiar with uh, and some statements um, that are wrapped up here on the right hand side. You'll see uh, a, tab, a button on the right that looks like a cloud, it says open export panel. If you click on that, you get another tab here, it says manage and downloads. Now currently we have no exports available, um, so we need to add one to get started. So if we click on the orange cross, we get uh, another sort of table open up here uh, with some pre-populated uh, statements available. Now we want to create a new one. For purposes of this, we'll just call it test export. Of course, you can call it anything you like. Now, like I said before, we get presented with a list of pre-filled statements uh, that come in the form of statement dot value uh, and the name of the column, um, which of course we can change um, to be suitable for the export. On the right hand side, get some of the example data. And then if we scroll down, we have our source tab. Now anything that you change in the bottom here uh, will affect the information that's outputted uh, in your CSV file uh, when you choose to download this. So for the purposes of this exercise, we'll choose a store, which is where all of your uh, statements that you're interested in will be located. Uh, you may have one or many of these, so just choose the one that you're interested in. And we're going to choose some filters. Um, for the purposes of this video, we'll just do something simple. Completed. And a particular course called After the Call, Successful Follow-Ups. Now we can see this data here has been filtered and is only relevant um, to uh, that particular object uh, and the particular verb that we're interested in. Now we may want to add some additional columns uh, that are not currently displayed in the list. What we need to do is go down to the bottom left here, click on the uh, cross, we'll give it a, a title. We might want to have this as the object definition, for example. And we can then choose something from the list or of course type it manually. So we may choose object definition and we can see in our list here, it's now displayed. We may want to start actually thinking about filtering this further because we're not interested in type um, when it's, uh, it's downloaded. So we can simply remove that uh, by adding an additional extension uh, onto the list there. You may have noticed that actually there are some uh, other columns here that have some information that we maybe don't find particularly useful. So it might be um, an idea again to, to filter some of these down. Now actually in this list uh, we can't actually see um, all of the things that might be available. But it's actually quite easy uh, to filter these down. You can see there um, before the name Ben Chin, for example, we have uh, the name identifier. So if we click uh, dot and then name, we now filter that list to just the names. Um, and it's a little bit easier to read um, and more manageable. We can take away some of that junk that we're not really interested in when we're actually exporting it. Again, we might want to do the same um, with our verb. We can see that there's some information display uh, and the language definition before the verb. We may or may not be interested in that. So again, we can type that information in and you can see now it's starting to remove it. And again, we go a little bit further and filter that down. Now it really is just as simple as simply hitting a dot and typing in what you see on the page in front of you. Sometimes it will be available in the drop down. Other times you'll need to uh, type it in. However, you just need the guidance from what you can see in front of you uh, to know how to filter it. Now that we have all of the information that we're interested in for the purposes uh, of this example, we're going to hit download. 
and that is going to give us um, a download that we have here. We can now click on that and you'll see that we download the CSV file. We can open it up um, in whatever you're using for your CSV files and you'll be presented um, with the information uh, that you've asked for. Now one of the things that you may have seen uh, when we were building up the query is uh, the load more tab. Now don't worry about that as far as uh, thinking about what is outputted um, in your CSV file. It's not important. This is just simply a display and it will just show you a sample of what's there. What's important is what's contained within here. If we have it as just completed, it will give you all of the completed um, verbs, uh, that uh, all the statements that have the completed verb in, and uh, that exist also in the sales demo data. Um, it won't just be this list that's visible in front of you, even though we can load more. And of course, it appears uh, like you're loading more data into the file. The last thing to say is that the sales demo data that we've used for this example uh, is available from HC2 Labs. Um, if you're interested in using it for your training or to try and replicate what we've done today, uh, it is available on request uh, and can be loaded uh, into your own instance of, of Learning Locker uh, by ourselves at HC2 Labs. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching.